Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on icing. And we're working our way through structural icing right now. And this video will start the introduction to the physics of icing. And specifically we're going to look at the requirements for structural ice. So the requirements for structural ice are number one you need of course liquid water and number two you need temperatures that are colder than zero. So liquid water is found of course in cloud in the form of water droplets and also larger spheres which we call drops. And to quantify how much water is in cloud, meteorologists came up with this term called liquid water content. Liquid water content by definition is the mass of liquid water in a volume of cloud. And usually it's expressed in terms of grams per cubic meter. So if you can envision flying through the cloud, opening up a box that's one meter by one meter by one meter and trying to capture some of that cloud, bringing it back down to, to the ground, and then counting the number of water droplets and weighing those water droplets, that would give you the grams of liquid water in a cubic meter of cloud. Now, when we do that um, in uh, um, uh, research purposes, when we fly through clouds with the cloud physics aircraft, we don't open uh, a box and try and capture a cloud. Instead, what we use is uh, laser probes that measure the size of these water droplets. And then given the amount of cloud that's swept out, we can actually calculate the um, liquid water content. Another way is uh, by flying through cloud and trying to evaporate as much uh, water droplets uh, in front of a little uh, heated probe and the amount of evaporation that occurs and the amount of energy required to keep the temperature of that probe the same temperature, um, that determines the liquid water content. So that's how we measure liquid water content. Liquid water content is highly variable in cloud, uh, both vertically, horizontally, and then also over time. But generally speaking, um, you tend to, tend to have uh, much higher liquid water contents at the top of cloud, and also you tend to have higher liquid water contents in clouds that are much younger. Older clouds tend to be um, made up of mostly ice crystals. But um, this uh, leads to um, the, uh, the phenomena that as you're going through cloud top, either climbing out or going down into it, that's where you're gonna get the most ice is right at cloud top because that's where the clouds are the juiciest and the most succulent. So that's liquid water. Let's take a look at temperatures colder than zero. And you know that as you go up through the atmosphere, temperature decreases with height, unless of course there's a temperature inversion. But we're looking at the, the simple concept right now that as you climb, it gets colder. And finally, you get to a point in the atmosphere where the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. If you climb any higher, it'll be colder than zero call that level the freezing level and of course that's the altitude in um, of course uh, height MSL feet MSL at which zero degrees Celsius is found as you go higher it's colder if you descend below the freezing level it's warmer so where you have these two conditions met where you have liquid water at temperatures colder than zero we give that liquid water a special name we call it super cold liquid water and that's abbreviated SLW so you can have liquid water at temperatures colder than zero. Uh, you're probably familiar with refrigerators and how they work. Of course, uh, they produce ice, um, but um, you can have liquid water at temperatures colder than zero. And the reason for that is you need to have something that starts the ice process. So getting back to the refrigerator analogy, you typically put water in an ice cube tray and the sides of the tray help initiate the ice process. In a cloud, there is no ice cube trays. In a cloud, the water is pure. It's not touching anything, uh, except for perhaps aerosols. So these aerosols that are floating around in the atmosphere that help the, uh, the, uh, the water droplets turn into ice crystals or freeze, are known as ice nuclei. And the definition of ice nuclei, as it says there, is any particle that serves as a nucleus leading to the formation of ice crystals without how it happens, without the process, uh, really describing the process. So in other words, um, if you have a pure water drop and an ice crystal or no, an ice nuclei strikes it or touches it, uh, that'll start the freezing process. Another way that uh, the ice freezing process starts with a water droplet is that perhaps you might have an ice nuclei embedded 
in the water droplet and it doesn't really start working until a certain temperature. It's been found in research that ice nuclei really don't start working until temperatures colder than minus 20. Um, however, there are some man-made ice nuclei. You've probably heard of silver iodide and silver iodide works at a temperature at about minus 12. And that's why we seed clouds with silver iodide is because they start the ice process at a lot warmer temperature. Minus 12 is a lot warmer than minus 20. But for natural uh, ice nuclei, um, they are in the atmosphere. They're everywhere. They're at uh, temperatures of plus 10, plus 20 degrees Celsius, but they don't start working until temperatures colder than minus 20 degrees Celsius. So that's why you find most of your super cool liquid water at temperatures between zero and minus 20. That's where the ice nuclei are not working. At temperatures colder than minus 20, the ice nuclei start to get the freezing process going and the cloud is made of mostly ice crystals. So those are the requirements for icing. In the next section, we're gonna talk about the collection efficiency of airfoils and other objects.